of breaking news this evening. Prosecutors have filed two felony charges against Lori Vallow for conspiracy or, or the conspiracy to conceal or destroy evidence. Now, these latest charges seem to suggest that Vallow may have known the bodies of both of her children were buried on her husband's Idaho property. So far, neither Vallow nor her husband, Chad Daybell, have been charged with killing 17-year-old Tylee Ryan or 7-year-old J.J. Vallow. The children's remains were found on Daybell's property in Rexburg earlier this month. Vallow also is facing felony charges of desertion and non-support of dependent children. Thank you everyone for being here for Crime 2 News First at 5. I'm Whitney Ward, joined by my colleague in the Crime 2 studios tonight, Mark Hanrahan. Mark? Hey, good evening, Whitney. We're going to get right with the forecast tonight because this week's weather has already been a roller coaster. Tom Sherry back in the Weather Center this evening. And Tom, dealing with some rain, but the 4th of July, is that still looking dry? Yeah, the 4th is looking good right now. We'll get to that in a few moments, but we've had areas of heavy rain in Spokane. The heaviest rain, though, has been to the north of us. We're also seeing some isolated thunderstorms. The good news right now, this is not near as active as it was earlier this afternoon. Here's a closer view now and, you, uh, now and you can see Spokane. Most of the thunderstorm activity and the heaviest rain now has moved into areas of northern Idaho. Sandpoint and the little town of Ponderé, just north of Sandpoint, have seen some of the heaviest shower activity. We've also seen some pretty strong rain move through the uh, uh, town of Spirit Lake in northern Idaho too. So again, we'll look for a continued chance of showers overnight and again tomorrow. Looks like we've got more rain on the way. You can see how angry the clouds look out there. 73 degrees right now. It's windy too. 24 mile an hour winds out of the west southwest. Now we look ahead to your day planner forecast. Showers at times continued cooler than average with a daytime high tomorrow of 65 degrees for the weekend, which is the 4th of July on Saturday. Mostly sunny and 82 degrees. 81 partly cloudy on Sunday. We'll track the rest of those showers coming up in a few minutes. Mark. Talk to you then, Tom. Thank you very much. Meantime, Idaho continues to see a troubling rise in coronavirus cases. There are now more than 6,100 cases statewide with more than 350 new cases today alone. And viewers are telling us they're now waiting hours to get tested in North Idaho. Some say they're waiting to get tested just to find out they don't qualify. Graham 2's Brandon Jones is standing by in Coeur d'Alene with an update on how Kootenai Health has been impacted over the past few days. Brandon? Mark with 30 new cases here in the panhandle and the majority of those being in Kootenai County. We're going to see the wait times and the demand for tests probably continue to rise. Right now I'm at a particular location here in Kootenai County, Coeur d'Alene, and you can see the line has died down tremendously, but earlier today the line was long. It was out into the middle of the street. Some people had to wait up to six hours to receive a test and to put that into perspective of just how much the demand has gone up over recent days. I spoke with officials here at Cooney Health and what I found out was that last week they averaged about 215 tests each day. Yesterday they tested around 431 people and that number could have gone up even more today. So with the resources they currently have, they're trying to do their best, but the demand keeps rising. With that said, there's hope that help could soon be on the way. Um, and we also know that Kootenai Health's um, testing site has been overrun with people wanting to be tested. And um, we believe recently there's been two or three hour waiting period in the, in the line at that testing site. So we are also looking at um, additional testing locations that we can have set up in our area. The health district doesn't have an exact idea of where new testing locations could be placed in the county, but they did tell me it would preferably be outdoor testing where traffic wouldn't be impacted. For the time being, they're asking people who believe they've been exposed to the virus to self isolate until they can bring in more resources. And like I said, I did speak with Kootenai Health as well. And what they told me is that they're going to do their best. They're trying to do their best. And over the next couple of days, they're going to try to implement new ways for testing that includes setting online appointments to try to ease that demand. From Coeur d'Alene, Brandon Jones, from 2 News. Brandon, thank you very much. Panhandle Health again district reporting 30 new coronavirus cases today. There are no new reported deaths. Currently, only one person is hospitalized in the Panhandle due to the coronavirus. Well, for the second day in a row, we saw the highest spike in coronavirus cases being reported in Spokane County. The Spokane Regional Health District reported 81 new coronavirus cases today. There have been 39 reported deaths, no new deaths since yesterday. Currently, 16 of the people hospitalized are from Spokane County. 
And Whitney local leaders say the recent spike in cases means Spokane County is not ready to move into phase three. Absolutely. Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward agrees with that. She is no longer pushing to have us reopen or move into phase three. She did talk with Krem2 Shana Waltower today. In fact, she says there is even a chance that we could be pushed back to phase one. Yeah, pretty big decision coming out now. The mayor now joining in with health leaders and officials saying that it's not likely we'll be moving into phase three just yet, especially due to the recent uptick in cases that we've seen. I think we're going to be in phase two for a while. With a record 81 new cases reported on Tuesday, the chances are slim we'll be moving into phase three soon. So if the numbers are increasing in the amount that they are, I think we just need to stay where we are. Mayor Nadine Woodward says the decision comes from long conversations with county health leaders. They're taking the number of deaths and hospitalizations into consideration. She says leaders at Providence Hospital say they're also strongly against moving into the next phase. They have to be able to comfortably keep keep up with bed space and have enough staff on hand. County Health Officer Bob Lutz has also said he's definitely opposed to moving to the next phase now. He expressed some of these concerns in a Board of Health meeting last week. This emergency has not ended. It's actually picked up pretty significantly. With the recent spike, there's also been discussion about moving the county back to phase one. But that decision would ultimately come from Governor Inslee with advice from the state and county health departments. The governor did open the door to a possibility. And we've seen that happen in other states that have had to either pause or take a step backward. Uh, I hope that that is not the case but we will hear from the governor. She says a lot of the recent spread has come from people gathering indoors, especially in areas that don't encourage social distancing. So with the upcoming holiday, celebrating outside and wearing your mask is crucial to helping Spokane get on track for phase three. Shana Waltower, Krem2 News. Now, at the national level, Dr. Anthony Fauci warned today that the U.S. could in fact see 100,000 new, ca new cases of coronavirus each and every day if this surge continues, which would be remarkable compared to just 41,000 new cases across the country that were reported yesterday. In Arizona, where hospitalizations are now increasing, the governor there ordered the closure of all bars, gyms, movie theaters, and water parks for the next 30 days. Arizona actually has the highest rate of positive tests in the country ahead of Florida and Nevada. Nearly 24% of tests there have come back positive over the last seven days, which is compared to just 7% nationally. Right now, the World Health Organization says the rate should be at 5% before states decide to reopen. Another top story that we are tracking for you tonight is Spokane City Council voting unanimously last night to reject the latest contract proposal with the Spokane Police Guild. So we know that that was an agreement put forth by Mayor Nadine Woodward. Krem 2's Amanda Rowley joins us now to talk more about what the next steps are in this process. At the center of this proposed contract is the police ombudsman's role. The reason most Spokane City Council members said they would not vote for the police guild's proposed contract is because it did not give the police ombudsman independent investigations. So what happens now? Well, there are a few different scenarios. The contract Spokane police are working under now expired nearly four years ago. Some criticize the proposed new contract for diminishing existing oversight powers of the police ombudsman. Since the city council rejected it, Council President Brian Begg says, first, the contract will now go back to the mediator, who will gather the mayor's office and police guild to try and reach a new agreement, one that city council would pass. Last night, Biggs told Krem 2 City Council wants the contract to comply with city charter. If the mediator cannot reach a new agreement, Biggs says it will be referred to the Public Employee Relations Commissions. That commission would decide what parts of the contract need to be resolved by a neutral third party. Meantime, Biggs says the state legislature may be considering a new law that would take the police ombudsman activities out of the bargaining process completely. If that law passes, it would be retroactive, and then this whole issue would go away, and we, it would just be the pay and benefits and working conditions. And I would imagine in that situation, 
we would come to an agreement pretty quickly. Council President Beggs expects nothing will be resolved, at least for a few months, up to a year. So for now, as negotiations continue, nothing will change until a new contract is approved. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Also new tonight, the Spokane Indian season has been officially canceled after months of speculation that minor league baseball would not play this summer. The Indians said in a press release earlier today that the this is the first time the team hasn't played since 1957. The Indians, along with the rest of the minors, won't play this summer because the major leagues are not providing the minor leagues with any players. Team president Chris Duff seemed incredibly confident, though, today that the Indians will make it and play in 2020. But he says he's also realistic about how incredibly tough coronavirus has been on his business. We're no different than a lot of small businesses and a lot of industries that are going through similar things. Uh, but I do feel like this, this may impact us even more. I mean, we're honestly and realistically looking at, you know, over 12 months of no revenue. So, you know, we haven't really received any revenue since September of the 2019 baseball season. Realistically, we're not going to receive any revenue until the 2021 season starts. So. That's a long duration of time to operate with no revenue whatsoever. And Brenna Green will have more on this decision from the Indians coming up in our next half hour on Creme 2 News at 6. In the meantime, schools are already busy trying to make plans as they think about returning to school in the fall and what that is going to look like. Now the American Academy of Pediatrics is supporting the idea of sending kids and keeping kids in the classroom. We'll have more on that coming up after the break.